got a pile of stuff like old dead routers and circuit boards and whatever and people have asked me where I get components for things like the uh, No Toroid Jewel Thief and yeah this is where I get them so let's take a tour and see what we can strip off of here for future electronics projects heat sinks are one of the items you can get off of a board they can often be hard to buy especially the right size or whatever and they're not cheap they're just a chunk of aluminum but they're not cheap so one of the things you can get are heat sinks and this board has a couple of them and how I get them off there anymore a lot of them are stuck on here with this like double sided tape that conducts heat and what I do is I'll put a screwdriver or something underneath there and start prying really slowly because if you warp this aluminum uh, the thing becomes worthless. It has to be perfectly flat so it'll sit on top of a chip that's perfectly flat. And I'll pry really slowly on it, maybe use some rubber bands if I have to, and work it off of there. And what you'll get is you'll get this, and you can see the goop on it. And you take a razor blade, scrape it off. But this is that uh, stuff, that heat sink, sticky stuff that holds it in place. Okay, so one thing is heat sinks. Switches are another thing you can recover. These little uh, switches, they either momentary or you know single pole, whatever. Um, switches are another thing. I don't usually recover them, but you know it's not bad to have one or two around, especially if a switch goes bad in some other electronic device. So switches are something, and they come off pretty easily. It's usually got uh, this one has like four uh, connections on the bottom. You take off and desolder them and take them off of there. So another thing that's useful is one of these coaxial power connectors because they can also be hard to find, especially in the right size. And there are usually four or five desoldering things you have to do to get them off of there. This one just has three, I think. So three pins, desolder it, and pull it off there. I'll show you a use I just did for a video I made. And here's where I use that coaxial power plug. I replaced a flex cord with this. There's the plug, and this is for my... Uh, my LED ring light that I use on my little camera and yeah it's all black so it's hard to see but I just used epoxy and molded it into there and so now I've got uh, the power plug uh, a nice 90 degree angle power plug for the my ring light here's a diode you can see the little diode symbol and there it is and you can see it's marked D9 but there it is at the end of my screwdriver right there and here are some pretty big capacitors, 2200 microfarads, there's three of them in there, 25 volts. Uh, just two pins to desolder and they come right out of there. And then here's a, a thousand microfarad, it's six volt. And there's a whole array of, of, you can see back in here, of capacitors. So these are good to desolder, make sure they're not damaged. Uh, I've got one where the tops are all puffed up on them, which is not a good sign, I wouldn't recover those. but. If the top here is nice and flat and they don't look physically damaged, uh, it's a good way to get capacitors and save yourself some bucks, throw them in your electronics box. Here's an inductor. You can see it marked L right there. Get it in focus. So, yeah, there's an inductor, a couple lines, either two or four wires to desolder. And that's pretty much all there is to that. And, of course, there's lots of LEDs to take out. These have nice little 90 degree brackets, just two pins to desolder and they pop right out of there. Uh, so LEDs are good and a lot of times you get these LEDs that are two color, whatever, it will have three wires and they'll change color. So those are also cool to desolder, but again, you know, cheap, pull them out. Here's an inductor. You can see the symbol underneath there. Right in there, that little squiggly line. You can also see the L2. The 2 just means it's the second inductor on the board, and there's the value of the inductor. So, two pins and it's out of there. You can rewind these, by the way. You can unwind those and wind them to a new value. Back in here we have a toroid, and those are good. People ask me where do you get a toroid, for, for example, for a jewel thief. And you can pull them out of here, you can strip the wire off of them and rewind them. But uh, usually, typically, two or four uh, pins to desolder and take them right out of there and you got yourself a, a core. This board has three crystals on it and you can see this is 25 megahertz. You can see the X over here on the board. There's another one over here, another 25, and there's another one over here which we can't really see. I can't read the, the writings on this side. I can't really get in there to see it. 
And here you can see the D2 right at the end of the screwdriver. So this thing right here is a diode. Now this is a surface mount diode, which is kind of interesting. They're small. This is a whole platoon of capacitors and resistors in this whole area over here. And you can see that they look remarkably similar. And a lot of times capacitors are the same color as resistors. So what you have to do is as you remove them, you have to keep them separate. I just use like little plastic jars or something and drop them in there. But uh, yeah, you want to you wanna do that. So you can see C for capacitor and over here it's R for resistor. And then here down here you can see all the R's over here and all the capacitors over here. And strip them off. Uh, a lot of them don't have markings. You have to have some way of measuring them later. So yeah, but these are all surface mount uh, resistors and capacitors. And they look uh, remarkably like inductors too. So again, you have to keep those separate. This thing is a transistor, and I can tell because it says Q right there. Don't know what type it is. Uh, a lot of them don't even have markings on it. And this one is a rather big one. So, uh, yeah, you can see the tab there is soldered to the board. So this one has four connections. The uh, tab back here and then the three legs of the, uh, of the transistor. So, again, this is a rather large one. This is a smaller transistor. I can tell because it says Q1 right there near my screwdriver and it's small but it's not the smallest one I've seen a lot of the small ones will be tiny like the tiniest resistors and uh, so this is about half the size of the other one but it's still pretty good sized that is cute that's a very tiny little coaxial connector for an antenna let me show you the rest of that it snaps in there and uh, again just a little coaxial connector this is the other side of that coaxial connector. You can see how small it is. It's just a snap fitting. So if you're doing radio frequency circuits or whatever, that could be a very interesting thing to have. And that thing it's attached to is a piece of coaxial cable. On the other end of it is the uh, jack for the... Uh, this came off a router, so it's a wireless router antenna. This thing right here, marked L13, is a surface mount inductor like I used on that no toroid coil uh, jewel thief. Another inductor, very small inductor right there. Resistor, capacitor, capacitor, resistor. Uh, looking for anything different. Inductor, there's L17 inductor, L20 inductor right there. These are some surface mount diodes right here. So these are standard diodes. This diode is a two-color diode. It's got four leads. Uh, these are your standard diodes along here. Right there is a surface mount inductor. It's a coil type. It's not the small ones I use in some of my other things. But there it is. This is a really large surface mount inductor. You can see back here it says LA. And yes, it's really big compared to these others. There's some more over here to this side, but these are the wire wound types. And this is a solid one. Here's another type of inductor labeled FB. I think it stands for ferrite bead if I recall properly. So that one right there is a, also a type of uh, inductor. Don't forget to peel up these copper foil protectors because you can find interesting things underneath here. And popping off these caps like this can oftentimes reveal some interesting components underneath here. You may be wondering about these chips and some of the bigger components like that. Uh, these plugs, these Ethernet plugs and so on. I don't typically recycle those because I just don't have much need for them and they're an awful lot of work to get off of there. Uh, you could, but again, uh, not a lot of use for them. So I just let them go. Well, as you've seen today, you can find some very interesting stuff on these boards. Reuse them in your electronics project, save some money, and you can find some really unusual stuff on these boards you wouldn't normally think about. Okay, well that was it for today. Remember to always use proper safety precautions when you solder and desolder. Hope you find it useful and interesting in your electronics experimentations.